In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about climbing La Malinche in Mexico. Subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel. So the point of departure for La Malinche is the IMS, IMSS Resort. And whether or not you're staying at the resort or you're parking near the, the closed gate, that is basically the closest you can get to it. Now, I've heard guys that have said it's a three mile hike to the top uh, and a five mile hike to the top. Uh, for me, it was at least six or seven miles to the top. I would say six miles to the top, uh, 12 miles round trip. Now, La Malinche has a, a reputation, which is deserved, of kind of like a, a kids and families hike. And it does have a lot of minors. It does have a lot of families. But I assume if you're watching this video that you're an English-speaking uh, foreign tourist who does not live at above 7,000 feet and does not walk as much of this, as the people who are summiting La Malinche when you go there. So it's not a, it, it's typically used as an acclimation hike uh, for uh, higher mountains such as Pico and also uh, Itza, but it's a, uh, it is, it is, if you're comparing it to a 14er, it's on the harder scale of a 14er, uh, not the easier scale. There's no switchbacks in the trail, there's, uh, it's basically just a totally rough trail that's just well trodden. Uh, and it, and there's no, there's no just one way to go. So, uh, one mis one thing I would say that you want to do first is you want to watch this video, but also other videos, uh, that show you the summit, right? You want to know what the summit is, even though everybody's going to it. There are a lot of, uh, false peaks on La Malinche, so you want to make sure that you you've gone to the correct one. Now the the recommended season is typically winter for the Mexican volcanoes uh, because they have um, because there'll be snow on them, and instead of having a scree slope, the snow's going to have it hold together. Now the vast majority of people that climb La Malinche, that is local Mexicans are going to not have any technical gear whatsoever. Uh, but I highly recommend if you are coming to Mexico uh, as a tourist, that you have crampons and an ice ax if you're coming in the winter time. Now, if you're coming in the summertime, it's gonna be a scree slope. There won't be snow to hold it together. And you'll just have to make do with uh, slipping and sliding that way. But if you're coming in the winter time, crampons are very helpful. Uh, I've used crampons on this mountain more than any other mountain that I've climbed. Uh, but I typically did summer things for 14 ers The other thing I would say, there, the trail starts, like I said, at the resort. Uh, the resort uh, you can camp at the resort for like $4 a day. I highly recommend if they have vacancies to at least camp at the resort, then you'll have access to their showers and you'll have a secure parking space. Now you can park next to the, the trail head next to the lock gate. So there's a, there's a road, there's like a four by four road that goes up until kind of the, the end of the tree line. Uh, but you're not allowed to go on it. Uh, it's only for park officials and it's only for police. Uh, but that road is actually, I think is much better to walk on uh, than the trail because the trail is very, very steep uh, as much as 45 degrees at some points. And this is just the wooded trail. This is just in the woods. This is not wood before you get to the base of the mountains. You're still in the tree line. Uh, <laughs> and you're going up 45 degree slopes of mud. So definitely, definitely I would recommend taking the uh, the road, especially on the way down. Now, nobody does that, everybody takes the trail. So 
if you want to do that, you will cut out some distance, right? So maybe it'll be five miles for you instead of six, uh, but you'll have a much better grade. Uh, and if you have a pack, uh, then it, it might be a lot easier. Uh, I would say I took four liters of water. That was too much. Uh, I would say two liters of water should be sufficient for the winter time, but the summertime, maybe four liters is, is the right way to go. Um, and then there's also cabins. If you book ahead, you might be able to get a cabin. I was here on January 1st, 2023. And uh, January, uh, it was a... Uh, holiday weekend, right? It was New Year's Eve when I got here. Uh, it was so it was all booked up. They they when I emailed them, they said everything was booked up, but I was just like planning on parking at the trailhead, which a lot of people do, which you definitely can do. But I I went to the resort and asked for a, a cabin or or a campsite, and they had campsites. Now the cabins are closer to a hundred dollars. But they they sleep like a minimum of four, but they go up to six, uh, go up to eight. So the cabins are quite big, uh, and but they're they're also typically booked up. So, but just come here, ask if you want a cabin, go ahead and do it, and that that'll save you some hassles. Um, okay, the other thing I just want to say here uh, is about timing. So almost everybody that climbs La Malinche, which are local Mexicans, uh, are going to start in the daytime. I highly, highly recommend that if you are coming in here as a tourist, that you do an alpine start, right? I did an alpine start of 3 a.m. and that was not enough. I came into the camp at 8 p.m. Uh, I did get lost on the, I was confused about the summits, so that took an extra an hour than maybe you won't have. Uh, but I really should have done it at 2 a.m. Alpine start, maybe even 1 a.m. Alpine start. Uh, but if you're fast, odds are you're going to be faster than me. Um, but I ended up doing a total of 17 hours of walking, right? Uh, but maybe if you're faster than me, you'll be twice as fast. You know, if you're not wearing trail runners, if you're just, just hiking it, it's, it's going to take between 17 and 20 hours. Like I said, 12 miles and 4,600 feet of elevation gain. Give yourself an hour for each thousand feet of elevation gain or 300 meters. And your walking pace, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, depending on how heavily loaded you are. I mean, preferably, if you were doing this uh, and were not in a rush like I was, that you would camp here for three days, right? You'd camp at the resort for three days. First day, just total acclimation day because you're going, you're raising your altitude by uh, a couple thousand feet from Mexico City. And then uh, then you would hike up the next day and then sleep, get up and go the third day. So, um, that, that I think would be the ideal schedule for La Malinche. Like I said, most people that climb it, which is probably not going to apply to you, are going to do it. They get, they drive in in the morning, if that. Uh, and then they they uh, summit it uh, the same day and then drive out. But I don't recommend that at all, uh, especially for your foreign tourist. Um, now, I mean personally, I would rate this this climb as as similar to Mount Shasta in terms of difficulty, harder than Whitney, and. Um, you know, harder than most 14ers, right? So on the, the top half of 14ers. So gear for winter hike uh, would be uh, mountaineering boots or waterproof hiking boots with crampons, 
bring an ice axe, preferably a long one because you're going to use it, right? People sometimes have the shorty ice axe when they don't plan to use it, but I used it. Uh, and then the uh, trekking poles, at least one trekking pole. Um, and then, you know, waterproof, water-resistant clothing, non-cotton type clothing. Not that it's impossible to climb without the right gear. By far, most of the people that do climb it have what I would say would be totally inadequate gear for the, the circumstances. Uh, but, hey, I, I guess I can't argue with success. But it, if for people that have, you know, come to Mexico uh, to climb these things or as part of their vacation... Um, it's better to be more prepared than less. So in January, I think the snow uh, really started uh, coming in around 12,000 feet, right? Uh, in July, I'm sure there'll be no snow. So uh, that's that's what I think you can expect on the mountain. I think on the day I was there, it was forecasted 20 mile an hour winds up to 20, 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. Uh, and that was not an issue. Um, if you had, if it was snowing the day you were coming, I would recommend not doing it. Um, if you had gale force winds, that would be not cool. So that, that'd be kind of, but typically Mexico is dry, right? It's kind of like the Sierra. Uh, in California, it's it's very uh, it's kind of desert conditions, so it's very dry. Doesn't get a lot of precipitation typically, so there are a lot of good days. You don't have to wait a long time for a weather window. Uh, there there are some basic stores uh, and tiny little restaurants um, at the outside the resort and then within the resort. Um, so there's opportunity if you want to get a bite to eat uh, here, then you, you could. The, the campsites have, uh, don't have water or electricity. So they, the, the $4 campsites, uh, but they do have, uh, they do have fire pits. Uh, they're, and they're, they're quite beautifully um, done with their Hedges. The the only thing I would say is that it's about a hundred feet down uh, to the cars for the campsite, and I don't know, maybe it's fifty feet down, like of elevation, and then a quarter of a mile walk, uh, and then it's it's so you you're gonna you're gonna get some uh, basic uh, up and down. Not as much as you're gonna get climbing La Malinche, but it's a uh, you can't park your car right next to the campsite. Oh yeah, and cellular service is bad. Uh, so it's like 3G, there's a 3G tower like uh, at the resort, IMSS, uh, but there's, it, you can't really call anybody with that. I was able to get a few calls through, but it was not, good like the people couldn't hear me for large portions of the times or most of the time the call would not go through you might be able to get some text through to your family uh, or friends uh and on the mountain it was a similar situation there's a cell tower at about um i'd say about 11 so the the issue that you'll see with the video when I show you the climb is that uh, my altitudes were off by about a thousand. Uh, so, you know, I was measuring it at, at uh, 1,600 feet was the cell tower, uh, but there's one at, a, but that's probably 11,600 feet, something closer to that. Uh, and then the, uh, it's so you can get a signal there and you can get a signal on the mountain uh for a little bit i don't think it's going to be great i don't think you're going to be watching youtube videos or anything uh 
on your hike. Uh, but there's body cell service at times at the resort and at times uh, on the hike. Oh, and um, in terms of transport, I came by private car, but you know, if you don't have a rental car, if you don't have a car, uh, I do believe that there are buses from the town uh, that come up to the, I don't know if they come all the way to the resort, but they come at least to the gates of the uh, the park and then maybe it's several kilometers walk. It's doable, but it's not, uh, it's not super convenient. Uh, I think also you could, could probably get a private taxi up here for a reasonable price. Uh, and that seems to be what most people do if they're, they don't have a guide is that they, uh, they'll take a, a, a taxi to most of these summits and, and the, those things will be available and they're usually not that expensive from what I can tell. Subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel. Bye-bye.